How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Dom and Dave. And we're going to go into our Laws of Game session for this particular broadcast. And what we're going to kind of do is merge the Laws of Game along with the Game of Thrones. And one of the reasons why I like to piggyback off the Game of Thrones is I think it's a really, really well-written, um, really well-executed uh, story about power, politics, relationships, families, things of that nature. And a lot of, I like, a lot of times I like to use it as a reference point because the way the author, the author constructed that particular universe, um, there's a lot of really, really good stories and a lot of really good reference points you can use if you just kind of really understand some of the deeper underlying messages in that particular story. And it's multi-layered, really, really good character development. And what we're going to talk about is the Ned Stark's flaw, right? So the Ned Stark flaw. And Ned Stark is one of the characters in this particular uh, Game of Thrones universe. And what we're going to talk about is how his flaw, right, was detrimental not only to himself, but also to his family. And we're going to kind of try to get you, the listener, to understand that one of the mistakes that Ned Stark made, a lot of people are making currently today, right? And you may also be making this mistake. You may have made this mistake in the past and never figured out how to get a solution to this particular problem. So we're going to go into the problem, but we're also going to go into the solution. And this is going to be a really good broadcast for somebody that wants to kind of understand how to improve, right, themselves in relationship and also understand why they need to maybe work on how to be more persuasive, in a way that doesn't come across as really overbearing, doesn't come across as reaching, uh, doesn't come across as projecting and to try to put themselves in the best position to be a lot more successful in their interpersonal relationships. So the Ned Stark flaw is really this. We're going to go ahead and get right into it. Ned Stark had the problem of thinking that people thought the way he did or projecting his thoughts into other people. And what I mean, projecting his thoughts into other people is that taking whatever ideas he has inside his head and trying to project into another person to believe they got that same idea. And many of us, that's what we do in our day to day life. So what we do is that we think people think like us. And when we find out that they're not, we get disappointed. Or what we do is we try to project our thoughts into somebody else. And when it doesn't work, we get disappointed at that person. And there's a, a scenario or situation in this particular story called the Game of Thrones. And I really can't give you the prelude because it's really, really deep. That's why I you know, encourage people to watch that particular show. It's a lot of episodes, but I tell people to watch it multiple times because if you watch it the first time, you'll catch certain things. But then once you realize the whole story, when you go back and watch it the second and third time, you'll pick up stuff that you missed the first time because it was kind of information overload. There's a lot of um, foreshadowing in that particular episodes are in there's foreshadowing in episodes that really tells you what's going to happen in the future. But because of the first time you see it, you really don't catch it and you'll catch it the second time. Sometimes you catch it the third time. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of zoom you into a scenario that Ned Stark was in without giving you the prelude uh, because the setup really explains it. But I'm kind of just give you the actual zoom in scenario. So Ned Stark was with a woman who was the queen at that time of this particular kingdom. Her name was Cersei. And what Ned Stark did was he presented to Cersei, right, that he knew info about her that can embarrass her family uh, and also had the potential to get she and her children killed as a result of this information being released to the public. And what Ned did is he gave her out to escape. So Ned gave her a deal to where, hey, if you take you and your kids, you can escape. Uh, and I try to keep this undercover long enough to allow you and your kids a way out before this information actually comes out to the public. And what she did is when she realized that that's the game that he was playing, she used that as an opportunity, right? To seize power. And as an end, Ned Stark got executed. So once she realized that Ned Stark, because he knows this information, he's not going to use it to harm me. She then made her move and she used the fact that Ned Stark wasn't going to use that information to harm her so she could seize power. And as a result, Ned Stark got killed. Well, why do we want to kill Ned Stark? Because he's one of the few people that actually knows the secret. Right. So she was clearing house. What was Ned Stark's big mistake? The biggest mistake Ned Stark made is that he thought he could project his thoughts into Cersei's mind. See, in Ned Stark's mind, if he was in a situation that Cersei was in, and somebody offered him that deal. 
he would have taken that deal. So in his mind, that was a great scenario. When it didn't work, he couldn't figure out what went wrong because he thought he did the right thing. He gave this woman an out and all she had to do was take the out and then she could have been out of the situation. He never saw coming that she was going to go behind his back, right? And figure out a way to not only eliminate him, but it'll also eliminate anybody that could take that information and hurt her and her family. That was his big mistake. He rejected his thoughts into her mind. What Ned didn't understand is this. How Cersei thought was how she thought. It's not how Ned thought. So how Cersei thought is how she thought and how Ned thought is how he thought. And this is what didn't make any sense in the way in which Ned was operating. But I said Ned was operating off a script that made sense to him. So so it, it doesn't make sense to me because I can't project my ideas into Ned Stark. Ned Stark understood. And if you haven't read the seen the movies or actually read the books, you know, this is going to be a spoiler. But Ned realized that this woman. Has had children from her own brother. And then she presented those children to the public as being. Uh, children from her and her husband. Right. And this was going on. If she was willing to do that. She's willing to do anything. But Ned didn't see it that way. He saw it like. And you know Ned really was a chauvinist. And what I mean by Ned being a chauvinist. Chauvinists believe that women don't have the intellectual capability of a man. That's what chauvinists believe. Right. Right. Doesn't mean every woman has an intellect. Doesn't mean every woman does. Some women are stupid, right? Some women can't think their way out of a paper bag. But a chauvinist believes that no woman has an intellectual capability of a man. So Ned being a chauvinist, he couldn't believe that this woman had the potential to outmaneuver him. He believed that he had to protect this woman from what could have happened to her without really understanding is that she was the aggressor in this particular scenario because I'm going to give you some more understanding of it. She plotted with her husband, not her husband, I'm sorry. Cersei plotted with her cousin to have her husband, who was the king, killed. So when Cersei realized that Ned was getting close to the truth, what she started doing was cleaning house. First thing she had to do was get the king killed. So what she did was she and her cousin, her, her, her cousin, who she also was in a sexual relationship with, plotted to have the king killed. And they used a particular method to get the king injured. And as a result, he died right now. So I want you to understand Cersei is not only having sex with her brother. She's also having sex with her cousin. And what Cersei did was she used sex to influence men. Because one thing Cersei understood that most men are tricks. Right. And what a lot of women will do is that they will try to figure out, can I use my sexual power to control a man? And if I can't use my sexual power to control a man, I don't want to have anything to do with him. Because there was a, a scenario in that particular show in which the brother of her ex-husband or her late husband was getting ready to attack the castle. And Cersei said, normally under circumstances, I would try to use, you know, my sexual powers to appeal to this man. But she said, with this guy, you have a better chance of appealing to his horse sexually than appealing to him because he's not going to go for it. He's focused on what he's doing, which is attacking this particular castle so he could take power. Cersei was a type of woman where everything to her was, how can I get what I want from a man using sex? And if she couldn't play that card on her deck, she really didn't have a lot of other cards to play. So then it turned into, okay, well, I got to attack you, which is why Ned Stark got attacked. Because if she thought she could have tried to appeal to Ned Stark sexually, and I had people tell me that's what she tried to do in the book, then if, if she thought she could have done that successfully, she probably would not have tried to attack Ned Stark. But when that didn't work, OK, now I got to attack this guy. So this was the kind of woman that he was dealing with. Right. She was a woman who. Was out to get what she wanted. And anybody that was a casualty of it didn't matter. This is the kind of woman that you're dealing with. So you coming into that mentality with a chauvinist mentality about women not realizing how dangerous this woman is, you'll be the downfall, right? And, and that's something I try to get a lot of men to understand. You know, you can't be a chauvinist in dealing with women. Why? Because 
that's going to set you up to get hurt. That, you know, you thinking that all women think a certain way is you being a chauvinist. They think how they think. There is no formula to figure out how somebody's thinking. They'll show you how they're thinking with what? Their actions. So the mistake that Ned Stark made was he tried to project his particular idea into Cersei Lannister. And as a result, he got killed. Okay? And that's the Ned Stark flaw. Now, the problem is many of us do this in relationships. We do this in relationships every day. And then when things don't go the way we want it to go, we blame the other person. We never look at what we did to bring this particular result about. It's always the other person. Right. It's always I just got to find the right person, not I need to stop doing what I'm doing. So we got now the the, the you know, the Sierra prayer. You're going to pray and get this kind of person, not you're going to stop doing what you're doing. And in reality, if you don't do it, you don't end up in a situation, but we can't have that conversation yet. Everything got to be about changing a bad trajectory as opposed to don't get on the wrong path from the gate. Feel me? So what I'm trying to do is give people information so they don't start off on the bad scenario. So then you don't have to get down the road and try to figure out how to change Right. Being in a bad place, you don't get into a bad place. You start off on the right foot instead of getting down the road and realizing, OK, I'm in a bad situation. I got to try to figure out how to reposition myself. So what a lot of times what we do in relationships is that we want people to be who we want them to be. And then we blame them when that doesn't happen. So what we'll do is we'll meet somebody. And we see that we want this person to play a certain role in our life. And then what we try to do is figure out how to make that person play this particular role in our life. And then when it doesn't work, we blame the person. I just got to find the right person. No, you got to stop doing what you're doing is meeting somebody that is an adult just like you. And they're trying to make them be who you want them to be in your life. Right. Doesn't work that way. So we got to understand is that. We're doing this a lot. And then one of the reasons why we can never change what we're doing is because we're blaming the other person for not being who we want them to be. That's the net stock flaw. 